Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We praise and worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can take our seats. So look to the God. And uh, those who have mass intentions, if you have a mass intention, what is a mass intention? It's a special prayer request. A special petition you, be, you put before God at mass and presented to God by the celebrant. And, and you attach a, a stipend on that intention. So you don't just write the petition and send it. I think in your Kampala diocese, the minimum is 2,000. So Odomar is receiving them. Brother Odomar, you are doing it. It's a very special one of the main pathways to 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 mighty breakthroughs in our lives. Yes, so don't take it for granted. Then behind are priests. They are priests behind. Who are hearing our confessions? It's always our norm, our customers, OLSG family, to end our retreats with confession. Confession of sin is very, very important. We, are, we read in John chapter 9, verse 31. John chapter 9, verse 31. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but He listens to those who are devout and are ready to change their ways of life. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. We read that, that God's hand is not too short to save us. Neither is he, his ear deaf to hear our prayers. But it is our sins that have disconnected us away from him. We read in Numbers 32 23. Numbers 32 23. 32 23. Amen. So Numbers 32 23. That no one will ever run away from his from the consequences of his or her sins. We read in, in Proverbs 28 13. He or she who conceals her sins will never prosper. But he who confesses his or her sin obtains God mercy and receives prosperity. Ask your neighbor, do you need prosperity? God is good. All the time. So don't hide your sins. Maybe me, I don't hide my sins. Amina. Amina. So the priests are there. 
Bafana uibali. And there are many. There are many. God is good. And we bring them purposely for that. It's quite expensive to bring them here. But it's for the good of our souls. Amina. So we have short time here and the mass begins. Let's pray this prayer together. You put your right hand up. It is in Christ is all 23. Uh, uh, page 23. Uh, before you go, you can get a copy from down at the sales department. They are very special prayers, the Holy Spirit, in that, in that, uh, on that page, from right from page, I think, page 19. And, uh, yes, from page 18, prayers to the Holy Spirit. Prayers to the Holy Spirit. Soon we are going to begin a special preparation for the Holy Spirit. When it's after 40 days and after Jesus ascends into heaven, then the Spirit of God comes. So we shall start a very powerful time of prayer and fasting, preparing for the promise of the Father. Ask your neighbor with a cheerful face, will you be part? Amen. So start getting acclimatized to these prayers. Amen. Tell your neighbor, start getting acclimatized. So prayer for the engraving of the Holy Spirit. Put your hand up and pray. Prayer, say prayer. Prayer for the engraving of the Holy Spirit by St. Augustine of Hippo. Can we open our mouth and pray? Say, Holy Spirit, powerful consoler, sacred bond of the Father, and the Son, hope of the afflicted. Can we take lunch? Now be louder. Descend into my heart. Descend into my heart. Can you shout and the building shakes? Descend into my heart. Descend into my heart. And establish in it. And establish in it. Your loving dominion. Your loving dominion. Try to compete your sentiment. A kingdom in somebody say try to compete. Okay. A kingdom in my tepid soul. A kingdom in my tepid soul. The fire of your love. To you. We believe that when you dread in us, you also prepare a dread for the Father and the Son. Then, therefore, to come to me, consoler of abandoned souls. Outside, where is the Holy Spirit outside coming? Close your eyes and connect to the heart of God. Yes. Console the abandoned souls and protector of the needy. Help the afflicted. Strengthen the weak. And support the wavering. Come and purify me. Two times. Come and purify me. Come and purify me. Let no evil desire take possession of me. Let no evil desire take possession of me. Say it once again. Let no evil desire take possession. Say it with purpose. Glory of the living and hope of 
the dying. Lead me by your grace. That I may always be pleasing to you. Of your neighbor and say, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there are two uh, supernatural experiences of the Holy Spirit. One in the year when you see what we meet, the young boy who took it in full as two supernatural experiences of the Holy Spirit. Number one, you can write it down. So we have a short time. We shall learn a few things. But as you learn, you will be receiving the Holy Spirit. As you listen, you will be receiving. Acts of the Apostles 1044. Acts of the Apostles 1044. Are you reading? Acts of the Apostles. God bless you. Amen. Go say catch you. Amen. Acts of the Apostles. 1044. So what happened? While Peter was speaking, these things. The Holy Spirit came upon all who are listening to his message. While Peter was speaking these things, the Holy Spirit came upon all who are listening to his message. The Jewish believers who had come from Joppa with Peter were amazed that God had poured his gift of the Holy Spirit on the Gentiles also. I want to tell you dear brothers and sisters as you listen to the word of God the spirit of the living God is coming upon you. He, like it was with David. One Samuel chapter 16. Samuel from the 13. One Samuel chapter 16. Samuel is so calm. Take care of my father. Say, take care of my father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take care of my father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father. I may not have time to pray for the mind out pouring, but you are going to receive as you listen. So you have to listen So you really write this Write this down one Psalm 16 From 12 to 13 Psalm 16 From 12 to 13 So one Psalm is sixteen. One Psalm is sixteen. Somewhere, oh, somewhere. The chapter somewhere is so calm. Don't open your book. Don't open your book. Don't open your book. Don't open your book. So Jesse, Jesse sent for him. Night, night, night. He was handsome. He had a mulungi. Healthy young man. And his eyes sparkled. Maybe your neighbor is like that. Many of you is the man you want. Ask your neighbor, is he the one you want? He's the one. May the Holy Spirit give him to you. Some of you don't believe my prayer. Find your life partner. I your You are auntie. You say now. You are mom. Mama o. You are dad. Tata o. When I was in the parishion chapel in Chibeo. When I in Salama parishion chapel in Chibeo. So many years ago. Holy Spirit spoke to me. Moyo took his nerve and 
marriage. Take Maria as your wife. I said it to Maria. You said it to Maria. You know her. And tell your neighbor the rest is this. I know some of you are in terrible issues of relationship. Such things are unpalatable to you. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the sweet anointing from above. The sweet anointing from above. So, even if you you have been broken. You have, you have gone through fire because of relationship. You have no land or plan or woman anymore. When it comes upon you, everything that has been tested bitter to you will become tested. It will become sweet. Some of you now are putting it up, now you are serious. Pray again. Don't look at me, there's nothing I can offer. Say, Holy Spirit. I'm saying you are to complete your neighbor. I said you are to complete your neighbor. For that, you will be more anointed tonight. Some of you are going to in the next few minutes. Don't fear the Holy Spirit. He's the comforter. He's the counselor. He's the helper. So don't fear him. I already see some of you are wrestling with him already. <laughs> no, they are already fighting him. Don't fight. Don't fight. Put your up straight. The Bible says, as long as Moses kept his hand up, all enemies were defeated. But now I remember he's ready. But but God come with me. Pray with me. Sabanake. Pray with me. Sabanake. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You are the sweet anointing from above. So you can change your mind after. Moyomu tuki rifu. Holy Spirit, we invite you. 
We invite you, dear children. You are not far away. You are here. So we pray in the holy name of Jesus that you begin to touch us. You begin to anoint us. You anointed David. You came upon David. And you anointed him. And Bible says, you stayed with him for the rest of his life. We need you as a permanent helper, as a permanent resident in our lives. So we invite you that you come to us. on your head so I declare I declare in the name of Jesus that the fire of the Holy Spirit comes upon you now the fire of the Holy Spirit on you now on you now the fire of the Holy Spirit So don't fight. He's irresistible. His power is irresistible. So I declare in the name of Jesus. Power to you. Release 
Evelyn Alinaitwe. Liton Namtewi. And one Christian. begin our mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. And God is good and that's his nature. We just want to glorify God for the gift of this Day that he has given to us the third Sunday of Easter. We thank him that he has been with us from morning up to this time, journeying with us. And where we have reached, we want to cry it all with the holy sacrifice of Mass. We want to pray that what you have been praying for from morning, God will seal it with his precious blood. And, and, and also his body as you receive him. And I'm very sure that he has been with us. He has tested your patience. He has found you worthy and he's going to grant all your heart's desire. So let us prepare ourselves well by asking for God's mercy and pardon. And as we continue with this mass, the confessions are going on. Those who have not done their confession, there's a priest outside who is continuing with confession as we do the Mass. I confess, Almighty God, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done to what I have failed through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask, bless Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting.
us pray. May your people exalt forever, O oh God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the union of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us listen to the word of God. You killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, then 17 to 19. After they cured the lame man at the entrance, Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But she denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did all your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ should suffer, thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We are, our psalm is taken from Psalms 4, and our response is, lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish she released me. Have mercy and hear me. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favors to those he loves. And the Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the lights of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once for you alone, Lord. Make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Jesus Christ's expiation for our sins and for those of the whole world. My little children, I'm writing this to you that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins. And not for our own only, but also the sin of the whole world. And by this, we may be sure that we, we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, 
but does his obey his commandment is a liar and the truth is is not in him but whoever keeps his word in him truly loves truly love for god is perfected this is the word of the lord let us stand up and welcome the gospel verse 35 to 48. The disciples told what had happened on the road to a mouse and how he was known to them by the breaking of the bread. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and frightened and supposed that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you question within yourselves? See my hands and my feet that it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see me have them. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for John and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything? To eat, they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he broke it, and he ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of our own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I want to welcome you to St. Padre Pio Shrine as we celebrate this day, the third Sunday of Easter. I want to congratulate you for having passed through the celebrations of Easter. Those who went to the villages have come back and uh, those who had gone for your vacation somewhere, you have also come back. I thank the Lord that has been protecting you and he has again given you the grace to be here again. May his name be glorified. I want to let you know something that you are not here by mistake. That maybe you found yourself here by mistake. God himself invited you. And he invited you to himself that you come to him and God has been longing for you. He has been waiting for you. He has been looking for you because he had something to communicate to you personally. And not only that, he had something to do in your life. Amen. And so you being here, God is happy that he wants to fulfill something that he had prepared for you for so many years this evening. Something special about the resurrection of the Lord, that after Jesus had risen from the dead, great things began to happen in his name. And so this name of Jesus is high above all other names, because there has never been anyone risen from the dead like Jesus did. Jesus was the first one to overcome the highest enemy that people had, and that is death. He died and he rose from the dead. And so he appeared to his disciples to prove to them that he is truly alive. And in his name, things began to happen. The first reading tells us that after Peter and John had performed that miracle of restoring the life of the lamb, that man who was always at the gate of the temple, after he had been restored, the eyes of many people were opened. And people began to say, we have never seen something like this. And after they wanted to worship them, they thought they were gods who had come from heaven to do this miracle. And God gave them the opportunity, that is Peter and his companions, to begin to speak in the name of Jesus. And so he stands and bears witness to the risen Lord. And he says, the man that you people condemned, the man that was accused, the man that whose life was not spared, the one who was at Calvary, and you people shouted that he should be crucified, that you even gave a, a thief to be released and allowed the man to be killed, that man is alive. It is in his name that these miracles you see happening happen now. The risen Lord. But in the first reading, he tells us that the mercy of God is upon us because those who did this, they did it out of ignorance. They did not know that they were crucifying the Lord. The owner of life, the author of life was killed. And the mercy of the Lord is upon them if we repent our sins and come back to the Lord. So the repentance of sins is proclaimed to all right away from the people that crucified the Lord. And so he's calling us, he's calling them to repent us 
so that they may see the glory of God at the end of the day. Praise God. Amen. Miracles begin to happen when we begin to become humble before the Lord and we begin to acknowledge that we are sinners and ask God to forgive us our sins. Miracles begin to happen in our lives. And I want to, to glorify God for you people who have discovered this. You have discovered what Jesus has addressed today, even in the gospel. And I'm going to talk about that. In the gospel, we are seeing like three things, three signs. And these signs are showing that truly Jesus is risen and he's among us. When Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to the two disciples that were moving from the city of Jerusalem to Emmaus in the village, they were two. And he joined them, he was the third, and they were speaking about that man called Jesus who was killed innocently and he was buried. And they were talking about how mighty he had been and the miracles he was performing. They were telling this man who was traveling with them without knowing that it was Jesus who had risen from the dead. And as they walked around, he began to speak to them in different ways. He tried to talk about himself in the scriptures. And as he was talking to them, something was happening to them in their hearts. Until when they reached their destination, they told him, for us we have reached and it is evening, we want to rest. They invited Jesus that this place is very dangerous. You cannot continue with this journey. Come and stay with us so that you will continue in the morning. Where they reached, where they sat, this man, the third person, reveals himself to them as the Christ. The one who is risen. And how do they recognize him when he broke the bread and gave to them? And we are told that their eyes were open. Something that was preventing them from understanding, from perceiving the Lord was removed from their eyes and they recognized him as the Lord. When that happened, he disappeared. We are told that these disciples went quickly back that very night to Jerusalem and they met other disciples as they were narrating the story of how the Lord appeared to them, of how he spoke to them. The gospel of today says that Jesus appeared to them there and then. Before they finished even the story. And he told them, peace be with you. Amen. And at that moment, they were frightened because all the windows were closed. All the doors were closed. And they wondered where this man passed. He was like here. Boom. And at that time, they can't even run because they have locked everywhere. But they thought this is a spirit. We have never seen something like this in our lives. And Jesus saw them frightened. And he told them, do not be afraid. It is me. They still doubted. He said, to prove that I'm the one, see my hands. See. And what did they see? The signs of the names. And he showed them the side where he was pierced. And he showed them his feet where he was nailed on the cross as you see him. And somehow they believed it was the Lord. But that was not all. As he was talking to them, he did another thing, another sign. He said, do you have anything to eat? As they looked around, they found a piece of fish. 
and they gave to him to eat. And when he began the process of eating, their eyes were opened again. The whole thing that had happened on the good, on the Holy Thursday, came back to their minds. They saw Jesus vividly when he was eating, and he gave them to eat also. They began to understand that it is the Lord. But not only that, the third thing that happened, he began now to tell them about the Messiah, the Christ, right away from the Old Testament, the books of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, and all the scriptures that had been written about the, the Messiah, about Jesus, the Savior of the world. And then he said, it is me. All these things were written about me and they have to be fulfilled. Praise God. Amen. So in the gospel, there are three things that you can pay attention to. The first one, the wounds of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. The wounds of Jesus. They made the disciples to recognize him. Where we are standing here, we have two men, St. Francis of Assisi and St. Padre Pio of Petrinchina. St. Francis lived 800 years back and St. Padre Pio 130 years recently. But you know what happened to these men, these ones? This one was not a priest, but he was ordained a deacon. And towards the end of his life, he received the stigma, the stigmata, the five wounds of Jesus, St. Francis of Assisi. Why? Because he was connected to Jesus and he wanted to suffer like Jesus and he gave himself up for the souls, to redeem the souls, for the souls to, to, to enter into heaven, he gave himself as a sacrifice. And at the end of it, he received the five wounds of Jesus in his hands, in his side, and in his feet. And he lived with them for two years and died. He died very young at the age of 44. After many years, a son of St. Francis, a Franciscan, is called Franciscan because of Francis of Assisi, called Padre Pio. What happened to his father Francis also happens to Padre Pio. He was a very young priest. He had just been ordained, but he was upright before the Lord, and he always sought to please God in his life. He also wanted to participate in the sufferings of the Lord, what happened to him? The wounds of Jesus, the five wounds of Jesus appears on his body, his hands, his side, and his feet. And he lived with them for 50 years, bleeding almost every day, especially on Friday, the day that the Lord was crucified. And miracles, and signs and other things began to happen whenever these men of God did something. But with their wounded hands, they would bless. They would cast out demons. Miracles of healing and deliverance would happen whenever they prayed for the people. It was the Lord, the risen Lord, who appeared to his disciples and who showed them his wounds the power of the wounds of Jesus. That in the name of Jesus and by the power of his wounds, many who are wounded will be healed. Praise God. And I want to pray that by the power of the wounds of Jesus, someone here will be healed completely. Why did Jesus show his wounds? 
he wanted to tell them that I'm a human being, like you, the body that you have is the same kind of a body, the same material that you have created in is the one I also have. That what happens to you, the pain that you feel, I also feel it. But I have come that you may have life. I have come that I may take your pain. I have come that your life might be different. I have come that the evil one should not use your body to inflict the pain on you, but that whatever happens to you will give glory to the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Many times we also have our wounds, our woundedness. We are wounded in one way or another. How do we expose our wounds we sometimes expose our wounds uh, there are doctors and nurses here if someone has a wound somewhere it will cause headache it will cause fever it will cause other things and you become very sick and if you keep quiet and you go to the the hospital and you don't say the wound is here it might be in a difficult place but it's hard even to expose if you go there and you just say i have fever and what the doctors will treat the fever and they will leave the wound that is causing the fever and you will go back home you will not be healed healing will take place when you expose your wound to the nurse the doctor and you may say they are merciless because they will squeeze it up, they will wash it, I don't know with what, and they will treat it to be healed. And when the wound is healed, even the fever and the headache and other things that were surrounding it will also be gone completely. This is happening because someone accepted that I have a wound that needs to be treated. When we come to the Lord, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation. It is where we expose our woundedness. We show our wounds to the one who was wounded first. And by his wounds, we are healed. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> and so if you go for confession and you hide your wound, you say something that is not you will go back home and it will begin to pain you even more. It will accumulate pass and at a certain time it will be hard for you to even walk or to appear in public. So the Lord wants us to expose ourselves as well and show our wounds for the one who was wounded before us is ready to heal us. Praise God. The other thing that the Lord is doing around is that, first of all, these people recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. He wants us to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And this is the sacrament of the Eucharist. But after you have received the sacrament of reconciliation, your wounds have been healed. Recognize him now in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Receive him, body and blood. That anything that distracts us, anything that covers our, our minds from identifying the Lord is removed each time we receive Jesus in the most holy sacrament. That is in the Eucharist. Praise God. So, if you have doubts, like people who have doubts here, maybe you have been receiving the Lord just for the sake of receiving or without preparing yourself well, I want to, I want to let you know that the Lord uses this sign of the most holy sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, to manifest himself to us and to make us understand him truly. And the Lord is going to do something today as we receive him in this Holy Eucharist. Amen. 
the third thing now that is asking us to do is to read the scriptures. This is the thing that also opened their minds somehow, but they were able to know, yes, that Jesus speaks to us through the scriptures. God speaks to us through the scriptures. And from the Old Testament to the New Testament, this is the word of God. When you read it, you will never remain the same. Have you ever witnessed this, that your spirit is very long and you just go and open the, the Bible and when you read, as if what you are reading is, is talking about you, is addressing your issues. And some people just go and say, I think this is what the Lord wants me to do. Sometimes when you have failed to make a decision in life, you are scattered, you don't know whether to take this route or whether to take the other one, and you are there. And maybe you go to church, and as they read the word of God, as if the Lord is speaking to you through the scriptures. God speaks when we listen to him, when we open the scriptures and read it well and understand and allow the spirit of God to use us. God speaks through the scriptures. I want to encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, that you read your Bibles. Some of you had the habit of reading, but this habit is dying. When did you last open your, your Bible? Do you remember where it is in the house? Try to look, try to locate it. Where is your Bible? When did you last open it? Do you even have one? There is a treasure in that Bible. And what you are going through, the answer to what you are going through, the answer to the question that you are asking yourself is in that Bible. Just open and read. You will be surprised that greater things happen when you open the Bible. There's another thing also that happens when we read. We are healed. We are healed. But the devil, the evil one, does not want when people read the scriptures. It fights us. It's the reason why when you want to read, you sleep. You don't even finish what you want to read. Even the passage, you are trying to read it, you are distracted. You can't understand it. The child is crying. Someone is calling you on phone. Things are happening around you and you end up putting it aside. I also understand that nowadays things have changed. People have Bibles on their phones. Yes, it's good to have it on the phone, but it's also good to have that printed book and to read it, to open the pages and read. You can be distracted on phone. You are concentrating, the message comes. So and so and send a message. They are in between. Should I continue or I should first answer this, this message that has come in? It is distracting you from focusing. So if you have the written word of God, the printed book, please read it. Where you cannot carry it and you have your phone, also make use of that and that Bible which is on your phone. We are going to pray in this Eucharistic celebration that God will appear to us in a different way. That he will manifest to us as one on the cross. What has happened in our time? I want you to look at this, this Jesus. Who is there hanging? Actually, this Jesus that you are seeing hanging here on the cross, as you see him, is only in the Catholic Church. You will go to other churches, you will find a cross, but without Jesus. It is a cross, but it is there. Why? Because the disciples understood the meaning of what it meant Jesus coming, showing his wounds. This is a crucifix. That when you look at it, you see the wounds where Jesus was nailed. You see the very nails. You see the five wounds vivid on him. When Jesus appeared to them, 
they remained with this image, the disciples. It had never ceased to cross their mind. It was very vivid. And they kept it in the church. And each time they think about that Lord who appeared to them in the upper room when they were closed there, that image comes. It is the reason why they have not thrown it away. They are still with it. It is still in the church. There is so much power. When you come across that, 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 that picture, this one here, there is so much power when you come across the presence of the Lord. The one who manifested himself to the disciples appears. If you come across the crucifix, this man of God, St. Francis of Assisi, told us what to do. And when you come across a crucifix, say this prayer. We adore you, O Lord Jesus Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. And by saying this prayer, if there was a demon following you, it disappears, it vanishes immediately, because you have identified and recognized the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you to pause for a moment right now and ponder on what the Lord has spoken to you. He's not leaving you the way you came. He wants to manifest himself to you in a special way and by his wounds, he wants you to be healed. Jimmy We want to profess our faith that what the Lord has spoken to us will bring conversion and healing. As we say, I believe in one God. God will visit us in a special way and grant all our hearts in Zion. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord we pray for our nation. 
our presidents, the ministers, the civil servants, and all the leaders at all levels. And the Spirit of the Lord will reveal to them the reason, Lord, and help them to be good leaders that will bear witness to your name even in their actions. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord we pray for each one of us present here. Those who are sick, heal them. Those who are representing the sick people, reach there before them. Those who are searching for blessings, of family, of marriage, hear their cry. Those who are asking for jobs and for better conditions at job, for promotions, and those who seek to work outside Uganda and they are processing their documents, grant their heart's desire. And those who have been struggling with the yoke of the evil one, they have bad dreams, they are always followed by evil things, evil images, they are always struck day and night. Reveal yourself to them, dear Jesus, and let there be healing and deliverance, let there be restoration, and let there be breakthrough in their lives. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord gracious let us sum up our praises and petitions, saying uh, the prayer by invoking the intercession of the Blessed Mother, as we say, Hail Mary. Full of grace, Lord. The Lord is with you. Yes. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of God. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to the altar to offer our gifts, I want you to say a prayer on that gift and bring it to the altar, offer it, and the Lord will grant what you are offering to him.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of God. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, that as you have given her cause for such a great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But this time, above all, to love you yet more glorious when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more. The Lamb, once slain, who lives forever. They are for overcome with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Paul Semongeri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Francis, Saint Clare, Saint Anthony, Saint Padre Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the union of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father that the risen Lord will appear to us and that his praises among us will not leave us the same as we say our Father. Oh, name. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who respond against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all these things as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who saved your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. The faith of your children gathered here. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be with you always. With joy, let us offer each other the sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Happy are those called the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, Lord, and grant we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall sit and listen to the announcements. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. opportunity with all humility and in thanks from deep within my heart as you join me we thank the main celebrant of mass this evening our father Michael Mahasa let's love for him and our brother who has been helping uh, serving at the altar please let us clap for him we can take it for granted for sure that as all LSG each and every month the minute we say we want to come, Father says you are most welcome. Thank you really thank you very much again. It's surely, surely, surely beautiful. And I would love us to thank God so, so much for having made this day successful. I feel, I really feel that when you're clapping, it's not our people who have resurrected should be clapping. No. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how people have resurrected clap. Amen. Amen. So we are going to clap three times. Up we said. Three times you clap with your hands. One, two, three. Begin. And then with this. So the first is with the hands three times the second one two three and then the last tap 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 with your feet amen yeah. there we go people have resurrected don't we clap for jesus Thank you so much. 
And I would like to thank the service team that has been behind the program, uh, spearheaded by our team leader, our brother Morris is just seated outside. Please let's start for them. Thank you so much. May God bless you abundantly and reward you in a very, very special way. So friends, we thank God above all that our silent pilgrimage for this month has really, really, really been great, great uh, success. It has been of a great success. And we shall meet again for the same program come uh, 12th May. 12th May we shall be back for the silent pilgrimage. But we have a very, very, very amazing, uh, superlicious, I don't know how to describe it, program that is coming up for the Kenyan pilgrimage next week on Wednesday, uh, 17th to the 21st of April. And you're all invited to come and be part and parcel of this program. The fee is 650,000 Ugandan shillings, and you are all invited to come. I do believe the Lord has made us resurrect today. Will give us the money to be on the bus on Wednesday. Love for Jesus if you believe that. Jesus! Wow, thank you so much. So what is all about this whole program? My friends, this program is not like any other pilgrimages that we have had before going to uh, going to Shibeo. We are going to Shibeo on the 2nd to 5th of May uh, once again. But this program of Kenya is very, very special because we journey deeper in our faith and get to get closer and closer to Jesus. And the more you're closer to Jesus, the more breakthrough, the more miracles in your life. So my friends, we have reserved 10 more slots for the lucky people that are going to join us because originally we are supposed to have 50 people but we have been asked that we can add 10 people so that's give, that gives us the opportunity to join us. So friends, on 17th, this is how the program is going to run for the Kenyan people so you can know what we are going to do. So on Wednesday 17th, that is next week, we shall gather at Namgongo Basilica uh, for briefing and holy mass as we departure for Kenya. And then Thursday, we shall be arriving around 2 a.m. at Busia border and clear, and then we proceed to uh, the National Shrine of Our Lady of Subukia, Nakuru, Kenya, uh, via Kisumu. So we shall be checking in at Mary Mother of God Retreat House, have lunch, have a guided tour and prayer sessions. These are sessions that you have not seen before. The way of light, way of the rosary, and we shall have special prayers at the grotto of St. Michael. And then after that, have, we shall have Holy Mass, a personal administration and return. That is day one when we arrive in Subukia. Then on Friday morning, which will be on the 19th April, we will have our morning devotions at St. Michael, Pillars, the pillars of St. Michael, when you pray there, no matter how the devil has catched you, it releases you. So we shall be there. And then the way of the cross and fetching holy water. The way of the cross in Subukia is so, so special, you friends. We need to be part of it. And uh, after that, of course, we shall be able to visit the National Shrine of Our Lady of Consolanta, loving tone. And then at 2 p.m., arrival at the Little Sisters of St. Joseph Retreat House, Karen, where we shall check in and, and uh, be able to have our lunch and visit the Resurrection Gardens. But part of that day's program is visiting also the National Shrine of Our Lady, Help of Christian, Don Bosco Center, Upper Hill, Nairobi. So that day we shall be in Subukia, we finish the morning devotions, the prayers, we visit the National Shrine of Our Lady of Help of Christians, Don Bosco Center, Upper Hill, and then the National Shrine of Our Lady of Consolanta, and then we go to our place where we are going to be spending our nights, that is Little Daughters of St. Joseph, and then we visit the Resurrection Gardens, have our quiet time, Holy Mass at the Shrine of the Servant of God, Morris Cardinal uh, Otunga in the Resurrection Gardens. Praise the Lord. 
The Lord is good. And all the time. We shall enter our day with the talk and the rosary and then we retire. So these talks will be preparing us for the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit and for God to speak to us. Then on 20th, which will be a Saturday, we shall have morning devotions and talks. Uh, when we are in Kenya, we have all the meals. We don't miss them like in Chileo. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, evening tea, in your self-contained room with wife, with wife. So that one has to be put in so that you're reminded. I know that your 650,000 is put to you. Say amen. Amen. Then that very Saturday, we shall visit the resurrection gardens, have a moment of silence, or call it solitude, silent prayer, and contemplation. Lunch, guided tour of Nairobi City, and visiting the Vicentian Retreat House at Lavingstone, and then supper, holy mass, and then we retire. Then on Sunday, departure of course for Kampala, we shall also be visiting the Bank Fresh Eucharistic Shrine, Eldoret. So that will go bring us to the end of our program. But important to note that as we journey deeper, God will fill us with the Holy Spirit with gifts. So that as we come back to Uganda, my friend, hey, tell your neighbor, my friend. My when you look at the people who be coming back from Kenya, you will say, Is this the person that I knew weeks before? If you want such an experience, please register. At only 650,000 Ugandan shillings to have such an amazing experience. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. The Lord is good and that is nature. Can you clap for Jesus for that program? Jesus! Amen, amen, amen. So that is about the Kenya program. And now I get back to our Uganda programs, of course. Uh, daily we have meditations on the Rosary and St. Michael Chaplet every evening. Uh, for those of you who have joined us first time, always know that at 3 p.m. we are logged in on Zoom and YouTube to pray. So you're invited. So for that matter, as we are going back home, we are reminded that we are going to pray the Chaplet of St. Michael for protection. So please, Find some time, visit our cells desk, get yourself the chaplet of St. Michael, and then we pray together for protection. And then we shall also pray the rosary of seven sorrows in thanksgiving to God for all the blessings that God has given us today. And we are being encouraged as our brother was taking us through the session of the Holy Spirit. And there are prayers to the Holy Spirit on page 18. So as we build on the day of Pentecost for the greater power of the Holy Spirit, get yourself Christ is all. Yesu ye yona in Uganda. 10,000 Ugandan shillings, page 18. We shall be praying those prayers as we prepare ourselves for Pentecost. We want to thank you above all for loving God, for loving all LSG family. And we pray that you will always be dear to God and he gives you all the desires of your heart. Please, keep this ministry in your adorable and humble prayers so that it can grow more souls closer to God. And we shall always pray for you as well. And as I come to the end of the announcements, please, if you have joined us for the very first time, we have WhatsApp groups where we can add you and always follow our program. So please, you can reach out to us. Uh, Brother Morris, any of the service team members, they will record your name. Service team members, will you please so that people can see you? You can stand up for recognition. So if you are new, these people that you see standing, run to any of them at the end of this session. Tell them I'm not on that group and we shall be able to add you. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Can we clap for Jesus? Jesus! Thank you so much. May God bless you. Amen. And we want to clap for Evelyn. <laughs> clap for her. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. We glorify God for this evening. And we thank Him for everything that has happened to you and to me. And there are those things that you cannot see now, but God has done them. I want to thank Brother Bruno, present here. And I thank Father John, who is still in the confessional, listening to the confessions and reconciling us to God. And also, Father Oscar has joined. I also want to thank him, those are my community members. And uh, I thank the team, team members, the leaders, Brother Morris, Sister Evelyn, and your team members for putting us together, for bringing us together to love God, to worship Him, and to grow in faith. And this thing should be, should be realized, growth in faith. Don't allow yourself to be the same each time you come, each time you go somewhere. Don't allow yourself to be the same. Make sure something is adding on. And the other thing about the Catholics, don't be taken up by just miracles. Don't be taken up by miracles. Miracles will begin to happen when you have faith. And when you are strong in that faith, you will begin to see things that you have never seen. If you are rushing after miracles, after these cheap, cheap things, they will come and they will go away and you will remain empty. But if you have your Jesus with you and you are following that one, even in difficult moments, you will not be shaken by anything. So that is my prayer for you, that each one of us here will grow in faith and be witnesses to the gospel. Um, Saint Padre Pio, Saint Padre Pio, Saint Padre Pio, for us. and this is the place that you can always come to when you want to talk to God, talk to Jesus. You have the Adoration Chapel over there. You can come and spend your day with the Lord when you feel you are low, and I can assure you that you never go back the same. The environment here gives you an opportunity to, to deal with Jesus. You have the growth of St. Padre Pio down there. You have the growth of St. Anthony. And every Tuesday in the afternoon at 4.30, we have the novena of St. Anthony and Mass every Tuesday. Those who stay around, you can always come and join us. There are many things that God has done for the people who come for that, that prayer session. And every Saturday in this chapel, from 2, we have prayers. We expose Jesus. We have the rosary. We have the divine mercy. We have praise and worship. We have the word of God. We have special prayers. We have the domain of St. Padre Pio. And then we conclude with mass at 5. Father Raymond always comes here on Saturday and at 4 he has the counseling with people. You can always join us in these programs. And any other time we are here. If you want to talk to one of us, you feel you want to talk to someone, you will find us, especially on Wednesday in the morning hours, we are always available. And you want to have your sacrament of reconciliation. Just come around, you will find the priest waiting for you. I want to wish you God's blessings. And I pray that what God has done for you will protect it. Make sure that nothing steals it from you. There are so many things outside there, even on the way as you go home. But remain strong, holding that gift that you have received today in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to bless you with the relic of St. Padre Pio. And after blessing you, I will also bless uh, the articles, the things that you have. And then at the end of the Mass, I will anoint you. As you get out, just come for the anointing and then go out. 
And if you have something that you want to support this place with, something financial, the basket will also be there. Don't be shy. What it is, just put it there for the glory of God. You may not know what that, uh, what that gift does to maintain this place and make it a better place where people will come and they still find Jesus be glorified here. So always support our ministry. And then don't be shy to support this ministry also by seeing the leaders of this group outside there as already announced to you. I want you to hold what you want to be blessed in your hands. The rosaries, the pictures, the crosses, the portraits of Mother Mary and all other things, your phones, your monies, just hold them in your hands and invite the Lord for a special blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. God, our loving Father, here are your children. Before you presenting these things that you are seeing them holding in their hands, I ask you, Abba Father, to open the heavens once more and let your Holy Spirit come upon them and bless and sanctify these articles of faith and they will be used to bring about healing of body and soul to cast out the evil spirits and also to protect your children from the assaults of the evil one and help them grow strong in their faith. I pray that those who will use these articles with faith will draw closer to you and will be protected all the days of their life. It is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our Mass is ended. Mass is Thank you for keeping time today.